On today's FC to FM mashup challenge, I'll be using an ultimate team draft to rebuild a club on Football Manager for a single season. And today, we get to use heroes and icons. A quick reminder of the rules and targets for this draft challenge. So we'll be taking the formations that the FC draft gives us and throwing them into a wheel of fortune to determine how screwed we are on Football Manager. We then pick our club via choosing our captain. And if our captain is an icon, will be using the club they played for the most in their careers. The rest of the team is selected via the usual draft methods, with only the ladies being ineligible this time. I'm sorry girls, I'll get to you one day, I promise. All we can really control are the team and player roles on Football Manager, with our targets to win the league, win a proper cup, and win either the golden ball or player of the season. Got it? Good. Final Time to find out what our formation will be. Yes, I would like to use a draft token. And we've got a 451 and the lovely jubbly FC meta 4321. Oh! Alright! I'm happy with all of them apart from the 4312. So let's go and find out what we're gonna get. The tactics are locked in. Who is the wheel gonna give us? Come on. Don't be something screwy. No, 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 no. And it's given us the narrow, bloody formation. I like it. I guess we're going to be focusing play down the middle quite a lot. So come on, give me, give me an R9 just for the vibes. Just for the vibes. Oh, oh, we could go with Tottenham. We could go with Tottenham Hotspur. Oh, I don't know what to do here. My mind's telling me no. So it's going to be Robbie Keane and my beloved Tottenham Hotspur. Well, Tottenham Hotspur have done it. It's one of their great nights. I, I've got to check. It was the team he played for most, right? You're a smart mother. That's right. Uh, who should we go for? Let's just go for his strike partner, shall we? Harry Kane would be lovely. Well, God don't matter would you look at that. <laughs> Oh, yes, we're going for a cheeky Tottenham past and present. I'm sorry, Ian, I can't pick an Arsenal boy ahead of ahead of Harry. Uh, let's go for the other wing back. We're going to be getting so much whip for the, from these, by the way. Come on. Oh, Javi is in Carlos Alberto. Oh, come on. Let's just finish the defence. Centre back number one. Lauren Blanc. Get in the club, mate. Get in the club. I didn't even have to think about that. Centre back number two. It's terrible. Come on. Declan Rice and a Kevin De Bruyne and a Barella. Oh, wee. This is hard. I am in a pickle. I know for a fact Declan Rice is cracked on Football Manager, but he plays for Arsenal. So I'm going to go for Barella as our defensive mid. And then our Cam. If you want to give me a De Bruyne now, that would be great. Very nice. Oh, what a team this is going to be on FM. Pasty. Oh, baby. Johan Cruyff is coming in. That will be our football manager lineup, 100%. We really need a right centre back. And then maybe a left centre mid, unless the game just wants to give me a whole bunch of icons that are going to make my team crack. Oh, yes! Harry Kane may be on the bench. And then this should be an attacker. What? It's got to be Hullet. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to the Spurs fans out there. Rude is in the team. Can he play? Yeah, he can. Churam, mate. You're out. And we get the saddle we turned down earlier on. Yeah, mate, you can sit on my bench. Happy days. Mate, if we don't win this league, Ramirez. It's got to be Van Dyke, doesn't it? Yeah, there we go. There's our beastie centre back. Look at that team. Oh. And then who cares about this one? EA do because they gave me a Trent. 
That is the team, ladies and gentlemen. But Johan Cruyff and Pele are about to play for Spurs. In the quiet words of the Virgin Mary, come again. The players and the tactic are in, and let me tell you, I've never seen a sexier Tottenham Hotspur team in my life. Pele and Cruyff up top, can you beat it? <laughs> I've got high expectations, but not as high as you would think. There are a few caveats. You might notice that Van Dijk isn't in as a centre-back. That is because this database has him as a kid. Look at him. Little young boy over here. Huh? Same goes for Mohamed Salah. This is Kid Salah. <laughs> so yeah, there are some players that are younger than you would think. Even Laurent Blanc. We've got a 20-year-old Laurent Blanc who's got 9 acceleration and 8 pace out of 20. You'll also see that we've got Enzo on the bench who we did not draft. Unfortunately, this database does not have Ramirez. I am disgusted with it. So I went and reviewed the footage. Enzo also popped up during that choice. So I thought, you know, may as well keep it Chelsea. Ramirez is out. Enzo is in. Just to go into the tactic a little bit more. Shorter passing, higher tempo, be more expressive. I want Pele, Cruyff, anyone who's good in this team just to do their thing. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a genius. Gagan press defensively, counter press, counter, and then step up more, much more uh, often with the press and a much higher line. Not too sure how that's going to go with Blanc's pace, but hopefully having a right back at centre back in Alberto will kind of make up for that, even though I've just seen he's got to get forward whenever possible. I immediately regret this decision. Winning the league, going to be difficult. In this database, every team is absolutely juiced. Probably no more than Man United. I mean, look at that. Matt Busby is their manager. George Best is their key player. PK is their best hot prospect. And if I just look at their squad quickly, they've got Ronaldo as a kid. Ooh. Gary Neville's on there as a wonder kid. A bloody wonder kid, Gary Neville. It is really desperate. And I do kind of fancy our chances with a domestic cup. This is at the start of last season with Tottenham, so we have no European competition to play in. Let's get into the season. And come on, you Spurs. The best Spurs team of all time were unsurprisingly very good on the way to January. Pele bagged two on his debut before scoring a whopping six across August. What? To win player of the month and have us feeling very confident in our hunt for that golden ball. He was even able to break Chelsea's hearts by breaking down none other than Jose Mourinho's bus in a cagey 1-0 win. And uh, as we say now in my country, uh, they brought the buzz and they left the buzz in front of the goal. Two more followed against Man City, but their own OG icons, Billy Meredith and Eric Brook, made sure we dropped our first points of the season. Up next, the young Harry Kane and scored the first Spurs goal of his career. Oh, oh that's the day he's done it again, that Harry Kane, that f***ing dirty little to leave us level on points with Bill Shankly's Liverpool in October. Annoyingly, Pele was out for three weeks and we suffered without him as we drew with Sheffield United in our warm-up to our home game with Liverpool. Luckily, it was our very own scouser, Trent Alexander-Arnold, who showed up most, laying on three goals, including a late low drill to set up a returning Pele in a 4-1 dominant win. Captain Keane then made sure we got past an outlandish looking lead side in the Carabao Cup fourth round before an unbeaten league run had us four points clear in December. That lead was cut almost immediately as an Allen Ball inspired Everton beat us 2-1 at Goodison. Our first North London derby of the season was a great chance to rebound and we did just that as Pele bagged another brace to send the Gooners scurrying back across North London. Shock of the season followed, unfortunately, as Armando Breuer turned into a prime R9 as he scored both in a 2-0 loss at Fulham. Not the best prep for our game against Busby's boys. Best and Pele were having a personal duel to start the match before Trent smashed our second. It wasn't enough though as Sir Bobby Robson came up clutch once again for the Red Devils to claim a late draw. Two points clear heading into January, and with Pele smashing his way to a golden ball, I was feeling very confident of a hat-trick of completed challenges come the end of the season. And that confidence was definitely misplaced, as Billy Walker's Aston Villa beat us at home to end our FA Cup run at the very first stage. Yeah, but, but Tottenham, it's the history of the Tottenham. Luckily, we still had the Carabao Cup, as we would battle Jose Mourinho yet again in the semi-finals. And not even a tank would have stopped us that day, 
as Mourinho's low block got humbled 5-0. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. A one all second leg set up a first chance at a completed challenge as we would face Newcastle in the finals. We'd be out for revenge as well as an Alexander Izak penalty left us two points behind United's God squad to head into February. The run to the final did see us return to deadly form though, as Johan Cruyff was finally turning up, Rude Hullet started to marshal the midfield in true Hullet gang fashion, and of course Pele was doing Pele things including a hat-trick over Manchester City. Surely, surely the Geordies stood no chance in our final right? We would have to keep our eyes on one of their players if we stood a chance. A certain young English midfielder called Paul Gascoigne. Or not, as we raced into a 4 0 lead via two rockets from Hullet and a Cruyff turn special. Gazza had seen enough and proceeded to try and kill Cruyff with a double footer just before half time. That's a red card, Paul Gascoigne. A red card and an uneventful second half followed as we claim the Carabao Cup and our first challenge of the rebuild. Tottenham Hotspur winning a trophy. Who would have thought? Absolutely nobody. What a sight this is. Challenge number one completed. And on top of that, Harry Kane has won a trophy with Tottenham in his first ever season with the club. What a multiverse we live in, boys. Ooh, I'm about to make a name for myself here. Yeah. With all focus now on the league, we had the unenvious task of chasing down the Red Devils for first place. Luckily, Pele was miles ahead in the Golden Boot race. So far that he'd probably have time for a holiday or two and still win it. Our chase started well, as a Pele penalty got us three huge points at Anfield. But he then went down and broke his big toe to miss the next six weeks. He must have really wanted that holiday, eh? We dropped points without him yet again as we lost to Brentford before drawing with the Gooners and Fulham. You should hang your heads and shit. Luckily, United had also dropped points to rivals Man City, meaning we visited Old Trafford a point behind with just two games to play. The game was quite frankly an emotional roller coaster. Captain Keane put us ahead in three minutes before carpet chest Ryan Giggs levelled a minute before half time. Mm. Not to be outdone on his return from injury, Pele popped up a minute later to make sure we led at the break. Pele, you go! The second half was so bonkers that I'm just going to roll the footage, to be honest. Oh, 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 oh. oh Enzo! Oh, Pele! Oh, Johan! Johan! I think he might be offside. Boo this man! No! Oh, no, 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 no. Off the post, wow. Don't lose the ball, don't. Oh, he's off the ball, he's off the ball, he's off the ball. Don't lose it. Pele! Oh, yes. Not Gary Neville. Gary Neville just assisted George Best. Boys, do not cock this up, man. What a game. What a win. Holy. What a bloody win. That has put us top with one game left. We're ahead by two points. We only need a point. Really, because we've got a much better goal difference. So we need a point in our next game, which I think is at home to Aston Villa. But my God, my heart, my heart can't take some of these games on Football Manager. I thought it was bad enough on FIFA, but I can't believe Gary Neville got an assist at the end, by the way. So Villa at home to win the league. And it was fitting that Brummy boy Jude scored our opener with a Birmingham blast from range. Ooh. Two more followed, but a miscue at the back by Cruyff had it 3-1 at the break. What? Bombocker! And one minute into the second half, Diaby banged a rocket to leave me sweating. Fortunately, our lip third six foot three centre mid, Rude Hullet, used his sizeable forehead to score two lovely headers and secure an emotional Premier League title win.
Boom. They're not even giving me the walkout. They're lifting the trophy. But we don't need it. We don't need it because Tottenham do the bloody double. Well, that was far too close for comfort. Bloody Billy Walker leading Villa on a little bit of a resurgence, but we put them down in the end. Thank you, Rude Hullet. And as you'll see, we've been crown champions. So we have won the league and we've already won a proper cup. So that is two of the three objectives done and dusted. And it's time to find out if we had anyone win the golden ball or player of the season. And I think we all know the answer to that question. Oh yeah, Pele wins footballer of the year. He's also gone and won players player of the year. And he's also won the top goal scorer. So we have done all three challenges. Finished, completed it, mate. And then a special shout out to Nicolo Barella. Not for what you would think. It's, I'm not about to shout him out for anything good. He was just there to break up play and break up play he did because he got 17 bloody yellow cards. Hey. Do you know what? what I might do is I, I, might, I might smash into some. There you have it. The 4-3-1-2 worked a bloody treat on this game. But I'm not going to go and say start using it everywhere because we've got a god squad right here. Whenever Pele didn't play in that shadow striker role, the quality went off a cliff. So very much have Pele to thank for this season, especially completing all three challenges. And also a big shout out, by the way, to Trent. 20 assists from wingback. 20 assists, mate. Kevin De Bruyne, eat your heart out. So yeah, happy days has been a very fun challenge to do, especially using these legends. There's going to be more to come with this database on the channel. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, do all that good stuff if you haven't already. And I shall see you in the next one. See ya.